<coughs> Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Magic Arena Run. Today we are taking a look at Blast from the Past. So, um, for this um, week's Midweek Magic, this is basically... Um, this is basically every standard set. So it's historic minus all the supplemental sets. So it's so so it starts with Ixalan. So it, it it's already counting the Kaladesh and Amon Ketri Masters as a supplemental in that way. Um, we won't be getting the benefit from any historic anthologies or jumpstart or or jumpstart um or jumpstart modern horizon. So we won't be you know, historic horizon. So we won't be getting those benefits there. So it's pretty much every, um, all the cards that have been printed. Um, there are two decks that um pretty much are making the rounds. Um, one is just sta is just some standard for back in the day rogues. So it's some rogue mill, you know, um, ruin ruin crab into rogue into rogue into rogue. It's I they either mill you out or they, or 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 they manage to take control and go go wide and damage you that way. <clears throat> Then I think um, to come up and combat that, um, we also are seeing Rakdos discards, um, basically Croxa. I'm I actually believe it is possible to do a sacrifice deck using a lot of the uh, incidental artifacts like Voldaren Epicure. The oh, I'll, I'll show you the um that concept I I'll show I'll show you the concept I had in that idea, but that's not the deck we're going to run because uh, it's it's. It, it kind of plays around quite a bit but so basically the idea is um <clears throat> you try to take advantage of all the incidental sacrifice um get extra damage in with mayhem devil and and cl and probably close it out with the bolas of citadel so that's kind of a that's kind of a plan there it's it's kind it's kind of fine you really need the croc sub if if only to just have something big um for people to worry about but um, it's not it's not quite it's not quite perfect. Um, you either close it out with the citadel, or you or, or or you tend to be missing points of damage. So I so there is room for improvement there. It is possible to just run that. It's possible to just run that. But I decided, you know what? I I'm actually I was actually quite busy the pa um the past twenty four hours. So you know what? Let's just have some fun. Let's just um. Let's just see if, um, how many times we can get a particular combo off. So this is um, a lifelink style combo, but it's not a life gain combo deck. You will gain life. It's an incidental, but that's not the main purpose. So the combo contains three pieces. It's either you either need a, a famished pa paladin or a lurking roper. So the cat. So they don't normally untap, but um, when you gain life, they do untap. So we're taking advantage of that. Then next is a source of damage. So basically, what do we do when we tap down? So here we're going. We don't have the scurry oak combo. Well, we probably don't want to use scurry oak, um, quite anyway because we don't have access to collected company or um um to beef up that combo. So we have source. So we have either sorcerer's wand or porky parrot. We no have no interest of casting this as a four drop. This is pretty much a mutate onto one of these guys. And then the third part is a source of lifelink. Now that one is a lot easier to come by. We had Rune of Sustenance from Kaldheim, which also happens to draw us a card. We can probably just cast it anywhere else as in the pinch. We have um, four copies of Heliod. Um, that also is a source of lifelink. Three copies of Gideon Blackblade, um, also a source of lifelink. Can also, and if we need to, we can have him run defense and make, maybe even exalt problematic permanence. And two copies of Angel Fire Ignition, also a source of lifelink and indestructible. It's a pretty good way to protect the combo. Um, other ways of protection, we running Selfless Savior. I tried running Alcide, but I got to this one weird moment, awkward moment where if I had to protect my Famished Paladin, it was going to lose lifelink because it was depending on it from Rune of Sustenance. We have three copies of Cleric Class, mostly for the mostly for the level three. It's a it's an it's a it's a safe way to buy back buy back a piece of the combo usually it's either buying back the paladin the roper or even buying back heliod because some um, that that would also start it up we have two copies of hushbringer pretty much as a safety valve a lot of the a lot of the opponent's decks depend on etb this does become awkward with croxa that's why i'm only running two copies if i have an ink thing it's black red i don't run this out after and that's pretty much it it's about assembling a three card combo um 
we do have a good percentage um based on the fact that um our, our lowest number of pieces um has a, at least eight cards each to fit in but that's but i should probably do the math on that combo how, how many do how many cards do we actually what's the odds of hit, hitting that one yeah that's a that's gonna be it that's actually a good experiment to run while we're waiting for our matchup so geometric calculator so we have population of 60 eight successes a sample size of seven we just need at least one So getting one piece is about less than 50%. Okay, we're going to reset that. So if we had to so if we had to multiply do, two of those that's about 20%. So we're looking at 15 to 20% getting it straight out of the bat in the opening. But um but that's just with the with with the opening hand, but um we but this is a turn tree combo. You can you kind of need to hit you kind of so we have quite some time to hit it probably want to it's actually closer to a turn for a combo because of because of some of the awkward parts like for example if we take the sorcerer's wand you can cast it on turn one but you still have to pay mana to equip it so th there's a bit of awkwardness there so it's closer to a turn for a combo if any so given that that's about a sample size of 11 cards So great. So we actually have very good odds of hitting one combo piece. So 80, 2, 40. So I think um we are 30 to 40 percent to hit the combo on in a relatively timely manner. The question is, can we get the game in a relatively timely manner? This is awkward. Did people start? It's almost Thursday. I I should check also if there's a. There's also an update queued first. Lars. I'm just starting th that download to see if there's anything wrong. No, this internet is perfectly fine. Did people just stop playing? We are able to turn on and turn off. I guess um now this one issue with blast from the past is that is that um, it's the it's everyone just playing the usual decks. I've I've already seen quite a, um a few complaints along that regard. Yeah, that's this is looking very weird here. I would like to get a few games in, otherwise this is going to be an awfully this is going to be more of a short than an actual video. Let's try one more time. So meanwhile in other in other news, I did finally hit diamond um off the back of mono green aggro. Um yeah, I'm still using last year's um I'm still using last year's deck air quotes last year's decks. But um but them, they, but they still function perfectly fine. I would, and um, until uh, I've see, until I see something solidify more, I would. I don't exactly like the idea of investing in a new, brand new deck right away. Also, uh, but I did make changes to that one. Um, I definitely upped the number of Outland Liberators. So that's the, that that's the two mana werewolf that um you can. S s you can sack to naturalize an artifact or enchantment or if it's in werewolf form it just has to attack it will take out artifacts and enchantments that way seems like artifacts and or enchantments are going to be the name of the game for the next few de for this upcoming meta okay this is awkward I'm gonna tr 
I'm, I'm going to try logging out and logging back in. So, okay. unfortunately, Streamlabs has no way of pausing your recording. And I'm also going to check our. I'm also going to check our, our arena server status while we're at it. So, yeah, we're. also do a check we are online so that that one works pretty much mm -hmm. yeah I'm just I'm just gonna close this and come back very quickly <clears throat> so we're gonna open that really quickly okay yeah the Okay, actually, while well, actually while we are waiting, let's take we can take a look at that win window capture. <clears throat> so, so say I'm looking for one component of a particular deck. Um, in this in this case, um, we have two two of those. So that's um, so. so and they and they're both at eight copies, so we set it at eight. Our deck size is sixty. I set the sample size to eleven because we, we are a turn four combo. We we pretty much have our opening seven plus up to four draws to get to it. Okay, let's set it to ten to be a bit more realistic. <clears throat> so we are close to eighty percent to have one of those components by our third third or fourth turn. Then, but you have to multiply that by the rate of the other components. So, it's roughly eighty times eighty times eighty. So eighty percent of eighty percent of eighty percent. So not. And I believe that comes down to. My computer slowing down a bit. Let's try again. Maybe this time we'll get a good match. So eighty percent of eighty percent of eighty percent. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, so 0 0.64 times 0 0.8. Though the other 0 0.8 is roughly higher because that one has 11 copies. But it's but by turn, but by turn three, turn four, we sh we are 50 percent to have the combo. So there, so those are our odds. Right now we have well too many copies, too many copies of one component, not enough copies of the other component. We have two of the three components, but we have too many of them. Also, a two lands is a bit sketchy. I'm gonna actually mulligan this. So we have this one is somewhat better. Again, I'm not not a fan of the two lander. But what we can do is we can take a look at if I see blue, that's an automatic hush bringer. Okay, white black. Okay, that's actually interesting. I'm actually going to play the Hushbringer. Let's hope our opponent's not playing Mardu into Kroxa. That would be super awkward. Okay, we hit the colors. Indestructible. Ju so, until end of turn. So, we can kind of protect this, but not much else. And this is our life gain. So we're actually going to just play these two parts. And we have an artificial way of um, gaining life, Hushbringer. So that's kind of the backup plan for now. Until we can hit either the until we can hit either the wand or the porky parrot, we're we're kind of fine. Also note that um yes, we can just use Gideon Blackblade to fire this up. Oath of Kaya, what does it bolt? Be bolts the Paladin. We're not ready to combo yet, so we'll actually let that resolve. I think our opponent might be playing control, so it's a bit awkward for us. We'll just play with Lurking Roper instead.
This could be a Doom Foretold deck, though it is missing the Yorion. Narset. Okay, so we're. It, this does make a Rune of Sustenance worse, but um, let's see. Our, if our opponent has to draw into a card, that. Okay. Ooh, Super Friends. Unfortunately, we are missing out on combo pieces right now. We only need one red source and technically only one green source, so... I march into battle as your champion for justice. I believe in you, friend. Yeah, but we need to start denying them cards. We could play another Selfless Savior. I think our opponent is likely to have a... Actually, we'll hold. I don't... Like, I only need to protect the Lurking Roper. I don't really need to protect the Hushbringer. If our opponent goes for something like a Teferi, we are not protecting it any... We're not going to be able to protect it anyway. Another nurse said. So this control actually kind of makes sense against um, if you're facing off against rogues for the most part. I will note that um, this deck does improve somewhat by having vanishing versus an option. Ritual of soot. It will wipe my board. But they are missing Valky. Reveals hand. Ooh, now I wish I. Oh, never mind. I forgot. Hushbringer neuters it. Okay, so we got kind of another part of the combo. We are literally just mi We are really just missing on. I can play Selfless Savior if I want to protect the Hush Break. No, I'm going to go below anyway if I do that, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to just... Yeah. We're going to make sure that Narset dies. We can't have our opponent gaining too much card, ad too much card advantage off that. Now because of the incidental lifelink here, we will get to put a counter somewhere. Oh, I actually forgot to activate this. Such violence is upsetting. We're probably we're very likely to sacrifice this, so we're actually gonna just put it here. Yeah, I actually forgot to activate that. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity. Share my light. I guess I do play this after all. Because our opponent is going to have two options here. They're go they're going to have to choose between going for going for Liliana and going for going for Liliana and the double sack and going for the ritual of soot. Dreadhorde General just makes a zombie token, but then um, we're pretty much ignoring it for the most part. I'm probably just gonna keep buffing Gideon Blackblade at at least up to seven. I will want I do want to have an option to exile. It's been we're at 49, so now I need to check what are our odds. So 49. Mm, sample size of one, number of successes is eight. It, we have we're currently at the 16% chance so it is kind of low 
we're more likely to we're more likely to win off um the rest of our board right now rather than the combo opponent going good help is easy to find in war another hushbringer but we're probably not going to cast that right away Kind of trading back and forth here. But we are our opponent is also gonna refill on cards, which is gonna be an annoying part here. Oh wait, no, they don't get to refill on cards because of Liliana. Oh they Okay, so we actually probably want to put one in Hushbringer after all. So we're going to hold on to the backup Hushbringer at this point. Opponent probably makes a zombie, has no choice but to go Ritual of Soot. And then protect the little game for two. Opponent might still have a different kind of removal spell, which is my... They can't sacrifice because of the attack. I might just exile this all together instead. Just just to be on the safe side. Because Mina. Opponent's gaining quite a lot of life, so we really need to hit that combo at all costs. Probably not gonna hit it anytime soon, but at least I appreciate having the Fable Passage. I miss these cards. If only just to have a way to. If only just to have a way to cut. So pro definitely gonna. I'm gonna still hold on to the Hushbringer, although I can use this to, get this one live. Cause I can't. Yeah, I think I might as well because, our opponent wants to protect one or the other. Want to see which one our opponent wants to protect? <clears throat> okay, they're gonna protect the Kasmina. That makes sense. We are going to give this one is indestructible. This one had life link. We're gonna give the big one life link too. Like you're on your own now. So put one here. It's very likely that um, Gideon is going to have to do the rest of the beating, so we're going to actually stack the rest of the counters there. Opponent makes a wizard, draws a card, discards a card. They are looking for something to get um to get them out of this hole. I actually forgot all about the. I actually forgot that um, Hushbringer is also very good against Death Triggers. Okay, now opponent hits Nikki B. They can do the destroy target creature, so... Or Planeswalker, so they can nuke Gideon Blackblade right at this point. They probably will. Yeah, cause I'm, because it's going to be one or the other. We dove in hand of control, so opponent is kind of. So we'll see. 
the problem with this oh I hope we hit our combo with Clary class that so we can use it to buy back a selfless savior so that's actually fine This is a so good by Nikki B. Might as well spread the love a bit. Um, not not very likely to act, make that active. This is yeah, but having this, having getting a ready backup for lurking Roper is going to be very important for us here. So we are currently at 45 cards. Mm, still about 18%. We're still getting. We are taking a while to get there. Actually, a, one Ugin is gonna really mess our day, mess up our day here. No Ugin yet. We're gonna actually use this to return the selfless savior, give us a backup. So target creature, target this one. Not so bad. We, both of both of us are in higher life totals than when we started. I have learned much. Then again, we are super. We are super vulnerable to a lot of things. We are now down to 43 cards. When it goes resolve. Targets the selfless savior, which we will respond by protecting the lurking rover, as um, that's the still the most important piece. We are yeah, 18%. This is off, an awfully slow going combo, that's for sure. Uh, not anymore. So let's see. Artifact, instant, and sorcery spells your opponents cast. I don't know if they have a counter spell. We'll find out. Oh, shoot. The life gain is going to be an annoyance. Might as well stack it all in one. And we might as well take out the Dovin when we're at it. And we might as well spread the love a bit too. The facts can't be denied. I am beaten. And I think our opponent sees the, should see the writing on the wall once um, this starts going. It's going to be painful for me because of all the extra clicks I have to do. But we got the combo. And their opponent concedes. They, they, writing's on the wall and let, and to be fair, how many? One, two, three, four, uh, four, five, six, well, six. Okay, six planeswalkers because Valky did not ETB as a planeswalker. Hushbringer doing a very good job. I might consider adding a third copy now, but I would I'm not so sure what I would cut for that. So yeah, we're remember as a reminder, we're actually doing this for the lulls. I'm not I don't want you guys to take this too seriously as a deck. 
but it it can happen we man <laughs> I think there are also uh, there are other ways to make this faster but I don't like the idea of adding a fourth color so that's kind of a no this one we have the combo all in right away so fabled passage into green sacred foundry to hushbringer that said we are casting one two three so this is actually closer to a turn five opponent might do us in by then so we and we have no way of protecting the lurking roper which is a problem also note that we can't just um stack this on top of this we have to st stack and activate um and activate the plus two so we actually need a total of five mana on the on that particular turn but then again that's three four five so we need to draw two more lands ideally when it goes ruin crab so we can kiss some of those lands goodbye we really need to hit the green and i only have one basic so i'm not gonna take that risk i'm gonna grab the forest right away Uh, hush it doesn't negate lands. That's kind of the job of Strict Proctor. Opponent now has an idea what our combo is now. Okay, this is kind of a way to make it cheaper if we go Famish Paladin instead. I'm still going to run the Hushbringer just to slow things down. But we, but we are still on the docket for two more lands. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do do it one one after the other. Another thing we can alternately do is we can run Famished Paladin Selfless Savior for the time being. One is probably going to kill the Hushbringer. Yep. Eliminate. So this is kind of a weird game of where we are trying our best to ignore our opponent. Okay, there's the Sorcerer's one. Unfortunately, we are not hitting our lands. So we're gonna go Famish Paladin. When it can't counter that. Selfless Savior as the back as the backup. They could bounce, which would be annoying. So next turn we drop the heal we have to drop Heliod. I would prefer to have something else. Yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe. I chose Hushbringer because it has incidental lifelink, which is kind of important. Okay, we just need to hit lands now, which should... Okay, we hit another land, so... Hmm... I am gonna. Uh, the problem is if Heliod gets gets countered, it's that's over. That's it. I can use cleric class to kind of buy it back. I might as well swing at the Famished Paladin. It's not really doing anything. Yeah, let's. As much as I want to cast it, I'm very sure there's a drown in the lock in the future. Let's see if we can bait something out. Okay, we'll play the lurking roper. That's the other bait. No, opponent does not counter either. Into the story. Okay, they're just drawing more cards. So, at the very least, um, lurking roper will serve. Sur would survive a crippling fear. Okay, we just need to hit one. Well, we are one more turn behind. Soaring top teeth. Yeah, they're putting going pedal to the metal now. They're yeah, missing those land drops really hurt us. I think 
that is quite a lot of our lands I, that I've seen. Okay, we hit one more land, so that's some good news. We can set that to green. Ah, does our opponent have... Does our opponent have the Drown in the Lock? I think that they, if they do, that kind of does it. Because that's one, two... We're out of two wands, wands and one Porky Parrot. We would need one more. They had to drown it a lot. Uh, and I don't think I'll be able to cast this in time. We'll be taking six. Yeah, that's a good game. So, ki kind of stymied by the the kind of stymied by the late start. I guess what I could I I could I could have done in sequence was just to cast the famished paladin earlier. Fa famished paladin cast the heliod early. See if we, see if we had it going. Because um, we could have gone the alternate plan, which was just to sma smash face with Famish Paladin for the time being. If we're able to keep supporting it with Lifelink, that would have been an alternate plan. Yeah, so we have to remember... So because we can't just baby the combo, we have to actually go for it. I suppose green aggro with mono, um, green red aggro is also gonna be a thing. Okay, so we have the roper, we have the source, we we have the pieces. Again, we're just missing lands. We're also missing a green source. But we can go on with selfless savior for the time being. In fact, I could just run double selfless save. We do need a red source though. So, oh, we hit our green source. Perfect. So. Magmatic Channeler, so this could be a discard style deck, so... I'm going to try to not run all the Selfless Saviors outright away. Actually, no, let's, let's just run it out. Our opponent would need to have a particular board wipe. So next turn, we can... Go for Lurking Roper, then the turn after that we can equip with the Sorcerer's one. I don't know if this deck ha Also, we do need to start s holding onto extra lands if we can because... Because um, this is a Croxa style deck, so our, po our opponent is going to be targeting our hand. So we definitely want to just discard the planes. We play out the pathway, then we... Then we take our time with the combo. Lurking Roper, next turn, equip. Next turn, Angel Fire. We can technically discard this because it has flashback if we draw into another land. Now the Now I did mention I was running Selfless Savior instead of Alsade because um protection kinda ki kind of kills the co could kill could be a self kill on the combo, so we need to be careful of that. Now the part that scares us also is that our opponent could have incidentally multiple pieces of removal. So these selfless saviors have to count. Yeah, we need two more turns. That's the weakness of Sorcerer's One. But we kind of have to go for it. Maybe we could have more protection style effects. Opponent sacking the Fabled Passage now pretty much means they don't have the they don't have the Mayhem Devil yet. That's usually the part of Crippling Fear. It it nukes out protection, which is a scary part too. They could have incidental exile in black, so that would also kind of ruin it for us. They could have a sacrifice effect that would ruin it for us too. It's kind of why I prefer Porky Parrot over over Sorcerer's One, but um, there's a, there aren't that many copies of that effect. 
So it's possible our opponent has an out, has an out to this. They they would just be holding on to so much removal that it's not funny. And we're gonna block because um, there's no reason not to. There's a rune of sustenance that would have been an incidental way to get protection. I'm actually going to just fire this off now. If our opponent has to remove, so be it. Okay, we drew our ba we drew a backup strat. Let's see if they have the removal. They probably do. We drew the backup strat, which is the important part. Now... I guess I go for it. I play the backup strat now. Now, we are s one... Oh, opponent concedes. They had... They, they saw... The, they could not pre prevent the combo afterwards. Okay. Whew, that was actually quite tense. Maybe not. Maybe not such a great idea to run this deck if um if you're living by the seat on the seat of your pants. So there we go. A porcu um, porcu parrot. Well, technically that would be um sorcerer swan combo, not porcu parrot combo. We'll do one last match. Some. Just to, just to remind people that yeah we can we don't have to play fair. Now that I think of it, I should double check. I'm pretty sure they kept all the historic bands, so trigger you also be out. Okay, so we're gonna be running um Gideon aggro for the time being. We don't really need the red source until the very end, so we can wait it out a bit. Opponent is also in lifelink, so there's a bit of awkwardness there. I could just grab the mountain. Yeah, let's grab the mountain. Then we can just we can still play this on white. Okay, got the paladin on two. Um now the three mana the three mana timing is going to be the most awkward part. Well, technically two mana. They could have, they could easily have baffling and glass casket. Daxos. Okay, so not not quite there yet. Unfortunately, oh, I should have played the temple garden, played Gideon Blackley. That that would have given me an opportunity free opportunity to swing. Okay, I guess. Now this is the fastest way to get the combo with the Fanish Paladin, the Rune Sustenance. Opponent did have the Brutal Qatar, so we might as well ping this. And the uh, bad news is if we somehow manage to answer the Brutal Qatar, we... Well, we have our backup Sorcerer's Wand. I could play the Gideon Blackblade, but it just gets run over, so I'm actually gonna just play the Sorcerer's Wand. Because it's an equipment, we can actually get the benefit by putting the rune on the Sorcerer's Wand. That gives us Heliod, so that gives us another backup strat. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of... um. Okay, opponent doing the old-fashioned life gain method. Pro There's a Hushbringer, but it won't stall this, but it would stall some of the other parts. Hmm. Also note that this is tree to equip, so it's some slightly awkward there. Let's play the Hushbringer first. We could... The it would have been a very good counter to... S so it, it nukes, neuters Daxos. It would have been a good counter to Brutal Qatar. 
Our opponent can still soul mender their way out of this though. We're probably gonna yeah, we're gonna have to take the hits like a good boy for now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh wait, are we? Nine, ten. Oh that we are dead. Okay. Oops, I miscounted. We we had to block there. Well, well, that but that's it. You kind of go all in in the combo. I could have prevented that if I, by playing Gideon first. That would have bought that would have bought us a bit of time. Though I, yeah, um, it a lot, a lot of the meta is kind of revolving around destroy effects. It's I'm expecting a lot of rogues. I'm expecting a lot of Rakdos. So it's kind of revolving around destroy effects. So that's why I chose the selfless savior plan. It does. It does make Rune of Sustenance awkward, but if you feel like you're running into a lot more of um, White Exile effects, go for Alsaid, but Alsaid does have the downside of you need to have one mana up at all times, so not 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 nothing's perfect I would say. But it's still better than but but it's still better to have something and it's pretty much up to you. I, even the cleric class could I guess you could sub that for more removal, maybe sub it for more hush bringers. So there's plenty of room for this one, but this one's just a relative blast for the past. That's going to be it for this episode of the Magic Arena Run. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, turn on notifications, and whatnot. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys again next time. Take care. God bless. Stay safe wherever you are. Have a great week, everyone. Take care.